Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Put together a video today looking at aligning fillet boundaries. Um, so, for example, in this case you've got a fillet on the inside and a fillet on the outside. And you want this uh, surface that spans between them. You want these boundaries all to align with one another. Uh, in this case, this, this example, these are planar. I've got another example here where doing the same thing except on geometry that is non-planar and I'm also doing this with uh, this is a fillet on the inside and a fillet on the outside so trying to keep uh, surface commands to a minimum and working on solid bodies so those are my constraints so working within those constraints of I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just delete these features and go back over how I built this okay so I've got a bit of geometry here non-symmetric or non these two sections are different so they meet at an angle that not 45 degrees and let's say you want to put a fillet on the outside like that and a fillet on the inside okay so now how to fillet this edge here that's the tricky bit so you could try putting a fillet on and changing sizes but obviously they're not never going to match you could try doing this with a variable fillet and then using asymmetric dimensions again that's never going to work perfectly uh, and if you want this line here, you want this to read as a plane, planar, keep this edge here, then you're going to have to do something else. So the first thing that comes to mind is to add a hold line fillet. So to do that you need to add some split lines, which indicate where the boundaries of the fillet are. So, one, and two. Go insert curve split line projection faces. Okay, now you should be able to go fill it, face fill it, pick your faces. Uh, because we're using two hold lines, you need to pick, make sure you're on curvature continuous and hold line, and then pick your hold line and go okay. All right, so you think, oh yeah, that looks all right, and upon closer inspection. If you really do want this edge here to be planar, you notice that this is wobbly. Um, so it undulates, and something I've noticed recently as well doing this, because if you're going to run a fillet around here, you think, oh, okay, that, that doesn't really matter, that's going to chew that away. Curvature looks all right. Well, I noticed um, I had some geometry failing, and I couldn't put a fillet around an edge that had one of these hold line um, fillets in there. So upon closer inspection in Rhino looking at that surface, I noticed there's like a surface, there's like a tangency break. And if you look in SolidWorks as well, you can see that as well. So there's something going on there. So and the and the curvature in SolidWorks doesn't show it up. Whereas in Rhino, if you very obvious there, um, some kind of change in the surface, and if I look at the underlying surface, turn on the control points, so you can see there's a like a, a band of CVs tightly placed together along that edge there. So that was what was causing my fillet to fail. Um, it's not it's not doing it in this example because this is fairly basic, but so I thought, okay, what if I actually want to get this planar? and I don't want this kind of toenail flat thing going on. So it's fairly straightforward, so what I need to do is add another two uh, split lines. So I need to add a split line through here and on the back face. I know these are planar, they're coplanar, so I'm going to add a, another plane through vertex and parallel to the top there. Get that plane, insert curve split line intersection that face and I'm going to add my second split line on the back plane top plane and through that point and then insert curve split line like that face now a split line is just going to make sure because these are coming down these are this edge and the split line coming down uh, and feathering together just going to make sure it extends right to the boundary here which it looks like it does okay so now I'm just going to create a boundary surface 
four directions. I mean two directions, four boundaries. Okay, and the first two boundaries we selected here, we're going to make tangent face. And one of those we need to flip the boundary because it's selected blue surface. So we go next face, now it picks the outside, and we're going to make tangent influence 100%. Go okay. And then we'll try and put this on by going insert replace face. So insert face, place, and now we're going to pick those four surfaces and then pick the boundary surface and go OK. OK, so that's worked. So now I'll hide that boundary and we're looking. So this, this boundary now is planar. Uh, because we split that face with the plane, and same goes for the other side. And if we just reinstate the shell, okay, so that works. And if I look at the surface in Rhino, okay, so there's no sort of flat area on the outside of the surface, and if you turn the control points on, it's actually following the uh, flow of the input curves. Okay, so that's that's how you can end up with matching up with using a fillet on the inside and outside of a piece of geometry and then the surface that spans it uh, as a resultant um, matching up with the boundaries. Okay, we can change our fillets and that should update okay. Okay, so I'm going to jump onto the other example now which is non-planar uh, version you can see. So I'll just uh, delete these uh, features and then we'll get into it. Okay, so I've created a bit of geometry here. So you can see what's going on there. So this, this one here is an extrude and this is a sweep along an arc. And the section of this is resultant from chopping the extrude on an angle. Okay, so I've got my outside fillet. And I've got my inside fillet. So this is our starting point. So I'm not even going to bother trying the hold line option on this um, because I don't actually like the result I got in case I end up with that funny fingernail thing going on. We're going to add these split lines to the top face to start and we'll have to do it to the bottom as well but we'll do the top first. So top plane sketch Sometimes I try and keep this as one connected entity because um, every now and then if you have disjoint entities when you're doing split lines it will split one face but not another. So if you just bridge them together with something like a span like this it seems to stop that from happening. Okay so insert curve split line like that. Okay I'm not going to draw a split line around here manually this time. You can do if you want more control you'd make it a plane through through these points here and then you could uh, make your own style spline you, have, you end up with more control but in this case I'm going to use the boundary surface um, using only one direction. So I'm going to pick these two boundaries and then tangent face and that second one when you want to go next face and then if I look from a top view, you can see here our oops, change to curvature, tangent to face. You can see in the top view this uh, edge of our surface that's quite it's quite flat through the middle. So we'll just inc increase our tangent length on both of them to 1.5, just to make it a bit fuller, like that. Okay. Now when I was mucking around with this before, uh, replace face was not working and quite often that can be because this surface here is coming in and feathering in and being tangent to the face it's trying to replace. So a way around that is to use a surface cut, but to use a surface cut, first thing we have to do is make sure the surface is fully uh, extending beyond the boundaries of our solid. So I'm just going to extend both faces, even though this one looks like it's extended already, I'll just extend it anyway, like that, and then you could insert a surface cut, um, but there is a, 
there is a problem sometimes that arises again as I said because this surface is running in tangentially along here you can end up with a really wobbly uh, resultant boundary so a good thing to do is to thicken up this piece of geometry first so to do that we can just um, offset these two surfaces by zero so basically a copy surface then we go insert boss base thicken we pick that surface offset and a nominal amount um, thicken those outwards and merge them onto our solid so we end up with this going on so now we've got some thickness between this surface and everything else our boundary along here is still running along here so SOLIDWORKS should see that as extending to the boundary to trim because obviously if this boundary was within the solid it can't it can't trim this um, cut the solid back okay so now we're going to insert cut with surface make sure the arrow is pointing to the piece we want to remove and go okay and then hide our um, surface okay so that's that's got a tangent connection across the top. You can change the boundary surface to be curved continuous if you want to. Okay, I'll just repeat the same thing on the bottom side. I go top plane, turn it over. Insert curve, split line. Put those faces, boundary surface, pick the two boundaries, tangent face, tangent face, this one we're going to have to go next face to flip the face it's referring to, just increase the fullness, go OK, extend the boundary surface, copy, so insert surface offset. So to do this copy surface, you go insert surface offset, and then we do an offset by zero, which is copy surface. Then insert boss base thicken. Pick that offset surface, merge result, insert cut with surface, make sure the arrow is pointing outwards. Hide our surface. And then just un reinstate that shell I had. One millimeter. Okay, so there you go. So as I said, if you wanted more control over this boundary here, rather than just uh, letting the boundary surface and the tangent influence decide where that goes, you can create a plane and split that surface there and manually make a four-sided uh, boundary surface. But this seems to work okay. So that's the result there. And it should take fillets okay. Like that. Okay, so that's aligned fillet boundaries. Uh, working on a solid body without having to turn the whole thing into a surface body. And do trims, etc. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you find this useful. If you did, please subscribe. Thanks, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio.